So I'm Matthew Rushworth, I'm a research scientist and uh, my particular interest is trying to understand uh, the prefrontal cortex, a part of the brain. Uh, so the prefrontal cortex, like many uh, areas in the brain, is actually uh, a mosaic of different areas. Uh, each little tile in this mosaic of areas has a different job to do. And one of the things that we're interested in is understanding uh, what all of the different parts of the prefrontal cortex are doing, what contribution they're making uh, to our mental life. So uh, to give you an example, recently we've been looking at a particular part of the prefrontal cortex. We call it the lateral frontal cortex. And we think this brain region has a very special role uh, to play in discerning what events in the environment cause each other. So how does one thing cause another thing? Uh, what events lead to which consequences. So in order to try and study this, one of the first things that we were doing was looking at uh, macaque monkeys um, and uh, we were looking at activity in the, the orbital frontal cortex of these macaque monkeys uh, while they were uh, performing very simple uh, tasks. The tasks that we give them are a little bit like a computer game for a, for a monkey. What they're doing is they're uh, looking at a computer monitor and they see several different uh, visual patterns that we call stimuli that are presented on the computer monitor. And their job is a very simple one to work out which is the best pattern to pick, to reach out and choose with their hand. And if they pick a good pattern, uh, then they uh, get a small juice reward. What we were interested in is how the animal links together the pattern that they choose and the good consequence the juice reward that they get afterwards. And it turns out this ability to make those links, to make those associations, is reflected in activity that we can measure in the orbital frontal cortex. One of the things that we uh, have also been doing is looking at what happens when the orbital frontal cortex uh, isn't working properly. What are the consequences for behavior? And we can try and investigate that uh, by making uh, a very precise disruption to the orbital frontal cortex. We can do this by using a special uh, surgery uh, that stops this specific brain region from working in the normal way while leaving the rest of the brain working uh, just as it would do uh, in, in, in every natural situation. And as a consequence of this type of, uh, of manipulation, we can see that animals are no longer so good at linking one event to another. They're no longer so good at working out which of these patterns that we're showing them is the one that leads to the juice reward. So this is telling us that this particular brain area is uh, doing uh, a very basic but also a very important job uh, in our mental life, enabling us to see uh, what events cause which other events in the environment around us. Since we made this discovery, we've gone on to see if it has any relevance for understanding how the human brain works, because a large part of our work in the lab is actually working with human volunteers. And there have been a couple of different ways in which we've taken the work forward with, uh, with human subjects. One of them has been uh, to put uh, ordinary healthy humans into MRI scanners uh, and to try and record activity in the human brain. But we're able to get a rough sense of where activity changes in our human volunteers and we've been able to discern a similar uh, pattern of activity in the orbital frontal cortex of our human volunteers while well, they're performing similar types of computer games only now instead of winning uh, small amounts of juice they're winning points that are going to be translated into money at the end of the game. Uh, a second way that we've tried to take the, the research forward is to uh, collaborate with other researchers uh, working with human patients who've suffered strokes. Sometimes when people suffer a stroke they lose the ability to use their arm in, or their leg and to move around in the normal way. But sometimes a stroke can affect the prefrontal cortex, the areas that we're interested in. And in such situations people suffer a different type of disability. They might be able to move normally, they might be able to see and to hear normally, but they don't seem to be capable of independent living in the same way. And it's difficult for us sometimes to understand what it is that's gone wrong. And some of our recent research suggests that this process of working out what causes what is one of the things that's compromised in these patients if the stroke affects this particular region that we'd been investigating. But this is something that we hadn't realised before. 
Uh, and then another way in which we're trying to take the work forward is looking at how uh, people with various different psychological illnesses, such as depression, uh, make sense of cause and effect in the world around them. One of the things that we know sometimes happens in depression is that people assume too much responsibility for, um, uh, for, for an, out an undesirable outcome, some event uh, that perhaps they haven't really been causally responsible for. And so what we're interested in doing now is seeing if our understanding of how the orbital frontal cortex works and how we work out cause and effect in the normal uh, in, in, in the normal healthy brain, if that has any relevance uh, for understanding how this ability may sometimes go wrong uh, in, in psychological illnesses.